The same factors that led Armenians to be dispersed across the world from their original homeland of the Armenian Plateau to Europe were also the same factors in a strange way that led them to embrace the new technology of printing that Gutenberg had invented in Europe in, 14, in the 1430s and 1440s. Uh, what's interesting in the case of the Armenians is the fact that, unlike most other peoples from the East at least, they, were, they did not take too long before they uh, creatively interacted with and incorporated the technology of print that Gutenberg had invented. Seventy years after the Gutenberg printed the first Bible in Mainz, the Armenians had a printing press in Venice. A man by the name of Hagop Megapart was printing five or six Armenian books in Venice, a tradition that continued afterwards. In the European case, the reason why printing really took off in the 1400s, middle of the 1400s, was because there was an increase in this, the demand for books, for reading material. And this is largely because Europe was experiencing a boom in universities. Later on, there was a Protestant Reformation. The number of years skyrocketed, creating a demand for more books for which the manuscript producers, the scribal copyists, could not keep up. So it was a process in Europe where the printing revolution was essentially led by demand. It was a demand-led revolution. The Armenian printing revolution was led by supply, by lack of supply, because of the sharp decline in the supply of manuscripts in the 1500s, 1600s, which created a, a incentives for the church to make up for the supply by producing it via mechanical reproduction. Throughout the 1500s, both Ottoman and Safavid empires were essentially waging war against each other on the same threshold, the same frontier zone, which was where the Armenian homeland lied. As a result of these wars, manuscript copying centers reached a low ebb of production. And because of the drop in supply, the price of manuscripts skyrocketed, making it very difficult for the church to obtain copies of Bibles, Gospels, Psalters, and other religious works, which, which gave the church all the incentive it needed to put its full weight behind printing. The major players in printing were, uh, on the one hand, the lit literate hierarchy of the church, Vartabets for the most part, or Archimandrites, uh, doctors of theology trained in the Armenian church, who were, spear who were sent by the Catholic Hosate of Echmiadzin in various small waves, trickles, in the early beginning in, this, in the late 1500s and accelerating in the 1600s. And their first goal was to print the Armenian Bible, because copies of Bibles were extremely rare at that time in manuscript form. And so many of these were sent from Echmi Adzin, and the first place they went to was Venice, and then Rome, and then Livorno. Mostly port cities in the Italian peninsula, where the art of printing had, be, had reached a new uh, crescendo. And there, most of these printers, who were priests, soon learned to collaborate with what I call port Armenians, who were long-distance merchants, originally from Julfa, most of them, some of them from Istanbul, who had the capital and the, uh, the interest in putting their weight behind printing. So they often bankrolled printing presses, commissioned books, and so forth. There were somewhere around 19 or 20 printing establishments from 1512 to 1800. The overwhelming majority, in fact, are located in port city locations. The very same places where a mobile society of the early modern diaspora has come to take shape. The only exceptions to this rule are A. Julfa, which had a printing press as early as 1636. Very unusual. This is an outlier for Safavid Iran and for the Middle East as a whole. The other exception is Echmiadzin, the first printing press in the homeland, 1771. Simeon Erevanti, Catholicos of the Armenians, established a printing press in Echmiadzin. A third exception is Lvov in the north. But uh, even though they were not port cities, their existence was bound up with the support of port city merchants. So they're mostly long-distance merchants from originally from Isfahan, Ijun Nujulfa, who are living in port cities in Europe and the, and the Indian Ocean realm, and who have lots of money because they've been trading in, in long-distance uh, international trade, trans-imperial trans trade of silk, diamonds, and uh, textiles. And so their capital is being invested during this whole period in shoring up printing enterprises that would have otherwise fallen flat because printing was not a commercially viable option. Uh, but through the support of the merchant class, Armenians were able to print uh, 
thousands of books, approximately 600,000 copies of books during the whole early modern period. For the 16th and 17th centuries, of the 150 separate titles that were printed, 72% before 1695 were on topics that we would today designate as religious. The rest were secular, but as small as they might have been, they were actually quite important. And they included grammar manuals, they included dictionaries, they included manuals for learning Italian, for instance, for the merchants. They included mathematical treatises and trading manuals. Later on in the 18th century, the number of secular works increases disproportionately. You have works of histories and so forth that are printed in larger numbers than before. So why is, why is the, the printing revolution important for the Armenians? Is there something deeper to it in terms of its lasting significance for today? And uh, obviously the answer would be that it is of, of great significance to who, we, who Armenians are today. And the reasons for this is because had it not been for printing, the technology of printing, many works that would have otherwise never been known to us because they would have been, they would have either been destroyed or disappeared somehow, have been preserved permanently through the technology of print. The first time Khorinansi's History of the Armenians, Hayat Spatmichun, was printed was Amsterdam, 1695, and numerous occasions afterwards. If the first printer of Khorinansi had not taken a manuscript of Khorinansi's History of the Armenians to Amsterdam and printed it, who knows, maybe we would not have had... Uh, uh, as much of a discussion on Khorean Nazi's importance to Armenian historical memory and history as we do today. The, f the bottom line is that it has survived largely because once something is printed, it's, it's forever. I mean, almost forever. Manuscripts are perishable. They're, there's only one copy usually, but printing by its very technological nature replicates mechanically that same process and makes it exponentially cheaper. So yes, it's very much important to Armenian culture t uh, today because it has preserved uh, works of literary value, works of history, works of religion by permanently fixing them in written, published, printed form.